Good evening. It's great to see you all tonight at church. Let's all stand. We'll get our service started. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord. We uh, had on our live stream, uh, or on our um, views this morning, 158 views, and Las Vegas, and California, and uh, I don't know where all we were, but we were a lot of places, so thank the Lord for that. We do uh, have some announcements for you. Um, Gary and Melinda are going to be married uh, on the 18th. That's going to be down at the gazebo in uh, Jonesboro. And that's going to be at 12 o'clock. So if you'd like to come to that, they invite the church. So uh, Gary Squires and Melinda. So don't forget about that on the 18th. Also on the 18th, the Senior Saints will meet at the home of Brian and Ann Burton at 1 o'clock. And if you haven't signed up back there, please do. Where we'll know how much uh, stuff to get to eat as far as hamburgers and hot dogs and all the things that goes with that. Now, if you would, those of you that are coming, just bring the fixings with you, the baked beans and the potato salad and different things. If you would, whatever you're going to bring, if you just put that beside your name, then we will know what all you are going to bring uh, to eat. So don't forget that. On the 17th of July is our Vacation Bible School. And uh, if you would like to help in Vacation Bible School, you can see... Uh, uh, Debbie, and she has her phone with her. You can text her, you can call her, or you can see uh, my wife, Terry, and uh, we are going to have a good time in Vacation Bible School. You can go online and register your kids if you'd like to do that, uh, so uh, make sure that you do that. On the 26th of June, right after church, we're going to have hamburgers and hot dogs and all the fixings, and this is for our 
uh, project up at the playground. We're going to replace some equipment up on the playground and also for the um, obligations that the Ladies of Grace have. So anyway, this is uh, $5 for adults and four and over are $3 and four and under are free. So uh, come and be part of this. You'll enjoy that, I promise you. Um, let's remember Eddie, Tristan, and Cindy Smith as they are gone to Maryland for his uh, bone marrow transplant. And uh, so remember them in your prayers. Also remember Charles and Debbie Shelton as they are gone uh, for his surgery. And so all of these are big surgeries, so we ask that you will uh, remember these folks in your prayers. Well, that's all the announcements I have tonight. We're going to, yes. Yes, 4th of July, don't forget that. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer and thank him for this time. Father, we love you, we lift you up, we magnify you, you're worthy of our praise. Thank you for what you're going to do for us here tonight in our church. And Father, we just pray for the choir as they sing the special music, everything that's done here tonight, Father, we're doing it because we love you. Now help us to worship, help us to lift you up in spirit and in truth. And Father, we'll praise you tonight for what you do in the midst of us. In your precious name we pray, amen. that'll be a reality amen all right this time we're going to worship the lord with our tithes and offering as our ushers are coming this is a time that you can give back to god as he has given to you and folks it's wonderful to be able to give to the lord so you give back to him tonight let's go to the lord in prayer chris take us to the lord
If you have your Bibles tonight, turn to the book of Psalms, chapter 139, and we will read again the first 18 verses, talking on this subject. Have you wondered how great God is? How you want, have you wondered how great God is? Let's all stand tonight, and we will read there in verses 1 through 18. O Lord, Thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsetting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compasseth my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thy hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's, it is high. I cannot attain it unto it. Whether thou... Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into the heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the upper, uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Let's thank the Lord for the reading of his word. Father, thank you. You're so good to us, and your word is so precious. Thank you for what you do for us every day. But most of all, Father, thank you for saving us. Thank you, Father, that we live, can live our lives knowing that one day we can go to heaven to be with you. Now, Father, bless us tonight, bless the singing, the special, and God, bless the preaching tonight. And we'll praise you forevermore for what you do, because you're a wonderful, wonderful God. In your precious name, we pray these things. In the name of Jesus and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Shake somebody's hand and tell them you love them.
job. This morning in this study, have you wondered how great God is? We talked about how God is omniscient. How that the Bible says that in 1 John 3, 24, if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth, and knoweth all things. You see tonight, God's knowledge is not just intellectual, it's also personal. He knows each and every one of us. He knows you. He knows everything about you. In saying that, we talked about three things that he knows about us, or four things. He knows what we are. The Bible says in Psalms 139, verse 1, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. He's done an x-ray vision on you, and he has x-ray vision, and he can pierce the hardness of your heart, and he sees way down into the very core of your life. He knows everything about you. He knows what we think. And I know a lot of times people think that their thoughts are just to themselves, and they are, except God knows our thoughts. He knows what we think. In Psalms 139, verse 2, it says, Thou knowest my downsetting and my uprising. Thou, thou understandest my thought afar off. God sees your thoughts. They're like a neon sign that he sees about you and about me. God knows where you go. In Psalms 139, verse 3, it says, Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. Every place you go, everything you do, every step you take, God knows about it. Amen. Now, I know sometimes, you know, that's a scary thought because of who we are. We're human. We make mistakes. We do things that are wrong. We say things that are wrong. But remember this, that every time we do, God knows everything about us. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. So he sees everything. He knows everything. Isn't it amazing to you and amazing to me how that he knows everything and he still loves you. And he still loves me. Knowing everything about me and knowing everything about you, he still loves us. The Bible says that he, he knows what you say. He knows where you go. For there is no word in my tongue in Psalms 139, verse 4. But lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all together. He knows what we say. He knows what we say before we even say it. Because he can read our thoughts. And some of you may be saying, I don't know about that preacher. Well, you better believe me tonight. That he does know our thoughts. He knows every word we're going to say before we say it. In verses 4 and 5 of Psalms 39, it says, Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thy hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Secondly, this morning, we talked about how God is omnipresent. And what that means is that as, uh, he's everywhere. In Psalms 139, verse 7, it says, Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? Everywhere we go, there's God. God knows all about it. And I'm glad he's with me, aren't you? I'm glad he stays with me and helps me and brings me through things that I have trouble with, especially in those times of fear, in those times of pain, in those times of health problems, in those times of, of job problems. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. He's always right there with us. As I told you this morning, in knowing this, that he's everywhere, a death cannot take you away from the presence of God. 
Psalms 139, verse 8 says, If I ascend up to the heavens, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, there, there, thou art there. And what that means is, if you die and go to heaven, he's going to be with you. If you die and go to hell, he knows you're there. All of those people that have gone on before us, all of those people that were saved, all these funerals that we've done over all these years that I've been a minister, people that were saved, God knows them. Because they're in heaven with him. Then all those funerals that I did of people that weren't saved. God knows where they're at. And by the way, folks, I do want to say this as I say that. It breaks the heart of God when someone dies and goes to hell. It breaks his heart. So death cannot take you away from the presence of God. Distance cannot take you away from the presence of God. Psalms 139, verses 9 and 10, If I take wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. He said, you can't go too high or too low that I don't know where you're at. You can't hide from me. You know, isn't it amazing that there's some people that come to church, and they get in church, and they do well in church, and all of a sudden they're out. And, and, and if you'll talk to those people, they really think they hide from God. That God doesn't know where they're at. That God doesn't understand their problem or understand their need. And I'm here to tell you tonight, God understands everything about us. He understands us better than we understand ourselves. He knows every single thing about us. He's a good God. Psalms 104 verse 3 says, Who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. I told you about that. But tonight, we're going to start with this third part of this second point where it says, Darkness cannot take you from the presence of God. Darkness can't. You know, we've always preached that people that are in darkness are lost, you know, but a lot of times, you know, in this flesh that we have, how many of you know that sometimes we may get into a dark place? As Christians, we may get into a dark place. And, and sometimes if we're in that dark place, we may think that we're hiding from God, that he can't see through that darkness. But God can. He can see us through that darkness. What does the Bible say about this? And everything should be backed up by Scripture. Amen. Everything should be backed up by that. So Psalms 139 verses 11 and 12 says this. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. Now think of that. The night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. So God not only has x-ray vision, but he has infrared vision. He can see in the night. I know uh, some of you have watched some of these, uh, you know, uh, some of our special forces as they go in on certain places and they have those night vision, you know, and it's just like daylight. I mean, they just see people uh, just like it's in the daylight. Well, that's the way God is. When you think you're in the darkness, he knows where you're at and he can find you. And by the way, the Holy Spirit will hunt you down. <laughs> and you really don't want to be hunted down by the Holy Spirit because when you're hunted down by the Holy Spirit, he pulls no punches. He goes straight to the facts and tries to get you out from where you are. Thank God for that, by the way. Amen. Thank God that the Holy Spirit, that God loves us enough through the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit tells us who we are and where we're at at that present moment and lets us know. So he has infrared vision. He doesn't need these night goggles, by the way. He can see in the dark. His eyes of light can pierce through any darkness. And this is why that you never get too low that God doesn't find you and help you if you allow him to. You know, the devil is such a liar. People come to church on Sundays and Sunday nights and, and sometimes on Wednesday and they'll say things like, if I came to that church, that, that roof would fall in. No, it won't. I'm going to tell you why. Because God knows about you before you come in church. He knows who you are and what you are. Nothing is a surprise to God. Our lives doesn't surprise the Lord. Amen? He knows who we are. He knows about us. He knows where we've been. He knows what we're doing. 
So he, his eyes of light can pierce through any darkness, and this is why nothing can hide you or take you from the presence of God. He's right there with you. You know, my mama used to say to me when I was a kid, you know, running around doing things I was doing, she would say, wherever you go now, son, the Holy Spirit goes with you. That used to bother me. Because I really didn't want the Holy Spirit going where I was going. Amen. I mean, I'm telling you the truth. You know, don't look at me like that. You've been in the same place. I mean, I really didn't because I knew it was wrong. You can't be raised in church and know about God and not know that it's not wrong. Amen. But then when you get saved and the Holy Spirit's there, He really lets you know it's wrong. How many understand and know what I'm talking about? We're all that way. Even as saved individuals, sometimes we get into places or maybe things that we shouldn't be, and the Holy Spirit right quick will let you know about it. But you know why? Because the Holy Spirit don't want to be there. The Holy Spirit don't want you taking Him there. He don't want to be part of that. Jeremiah the prophet said exactly the same thing about this. God knows everything. He says in Jeremiah 23, verses 23 through 24, I am a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off. In other words, he's right there. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't stay afar off, you know, where we can't reach him. He's, uh, boy, that's good words right there, folks. He's right there. You say, now, preacher, how in the world, all these people in the world, how in the world can he be with all these people? Because he's God. His thoughts are not your thoughts. His ways are not your ways. He's beyond anything that you'll ever be or ever comprehend. And the Bible tells us that, and I believe the Word of God, don't you? Listen, if you can't believe what I'm preaching on tonight, you surely can't believe uh, Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. So, he, he's there. You see, that's what's the problem with, with all these intellectuals. You see, these intellectuals have a problem with the first verse of the Bible. So, if they have a problem with the first verse of the Bible, then they're going to have problems with what I'm preaching on tonight. That God is everywhere. And God knows everything. And, and when you think about this, as Jeremiah is talking here... I am a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill the heaven and the earth, saith the Lord? That's showing, that is such a wonderful verse because not only does he say, I'm not standing afar off from you, I'm right here with you, but it talks about his vastness, his, his power. It talks about how big he really is. Do I not, he says, do I not feel the heaven and the earth? Am I not everywhere? Anywhere you go, he's there. I said it this morning. I'm going to say it again tonight because we need to be reminded of it. When you go on vacation, you don't leave God at home. He goes with you. And thank God he does. I mean, the Holy Spirit... He's right there with you. God is always with us because he's omnipresent. Now, the second, the third thing I want to say here tonight is this right here. God is omnipotent. Now, the word omnipotent comes again from the Latin word omni, which means all, and the word potens, which means powerful. So it literally says here, all powerful. Our God is, say it with me, all-powerful. What does that mean to us, preacher, as, as Christian, as born-again individuals? That means at your disposal you have the power of God. Amen? If you're saved, if you're a child of God, you have his power. Now, what does that mean to have the power of God? Well, we have the power of God through our prayer life. Now, if you're here tonight and you don't pray, you've got a problem. Because that's where our power comes from, amen? We, we plug in when we, when, you know, I've got an iPad. And, and that iPad is, uh, the battery on it's not real good. So I plug that thing in about every night. You know, some of you have cell phones. And what happens to that cell phone when it, you know, that battery gets old or whatever, you have to plug that thing in every night. I know about this because my daughters, 
Theirs go dead all the time because they never answer their phone. <laughs> and that's the truth. And my wife back there to testify of it. Amen. Amen. And what do they have to do with the battery on that phone? They have to plug it in. Charge it up. Give it power. It's the same thing in our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to me tonight. If we're not praying, we have no power. Because when we get on our knees, what we're doing is plugging in. We're plugging in to the power of God. Why do you think when you get on your knees and you start to pray and you start to get humble before God and, and you, use, you lose all your pride and all that before God and you start to pray and, and for a few minutes there it just feels like that nothing's getting through. You ever feel that way? Like you're just praying and nothing's getting through and the devil's on your back and the devil's saying to you, now you got to do this and you got to do that. you got to go here. Uh, you, you ain't got time for this. you ain't got to, you got to study. you, you got to go to work. you got to do all. Why do you think the devil does that? The devil does that because he's afraid of you when you're on your knees. Because that's where your power comes from. And how many of you know we have a lot of Christians, and I'm being honest, folks, a lot of Christians in our society with no power. And it's because they're not praying. God wants us to have an intimate relationship with him, and it's like my relationship with my family, with my wife, uh, you with your girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever that is. If you never communicate with each other, you never talk to each other, then you're probably not going to make it. Amen? Amen? God wants us, you and I, to talk to each other. And God is all-powerful. He has all power. There's nothing tonight that God cannot do. How many believe that? Amen. Nothing that God cannot do. Listen, folks. Obviously, there, there's some things that even God can't do, as I said that, and I'm going to tell you what they are. Uh, God cannot lie. God cannot die. God cannot do wrong. Everybody with me? God can't tempt you. And God can't tempt others to do wrong. Amen? There's some things God cannot do. But God is all-powerful. And when it comes to these things, these positive things in our lives, there's nothing God can't do. I want to illustrate just for a moment the, the power of God. You see, just to illustrate how powerful God is, David does something very surprising here in Psalms. He doesn't really talk, even though he mentions, he doesn't really talk about the stars or the sun or the moon. I mean, we could talk about that tonight and tell you how powerful God is. I, I could do a comparison and all these things that these people do, you know, that are very unique and very wonderful and show you how big God is and the galaxies and the stars and all the things that are out there. We could talk about that. But David doesn't mention that here to show you how powerful God is. Instead, he simply points us to the human body. And he talks about it. You, your makeup, how you're made. He talks about how wonderfully you are made. I think sometimes we forget that. Uh, we have listened to these nuts in our schoolhouses, and I, I know we have school teachers here, and you're not a nut, I know that. <laughs> But some of these upper educations, these colleges that some of you go to, you know what I'm talking about, that, that don't teach uh, creation. You know, they don't teach it. They, 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 they tell you come from monkeys, and most of them in colleges act like they come from a monkey. You didn't come from a monkey. God created you. You are wonderfully and fearfully, re let, let's say that you are wonderfully and fearfully made. How many believe that? Raise your hand. You are. I mean, even doctors have to admit that they can't explain everything about the human body because it's so wonderful. 
But I'll tell you one that has all power and knows all about it. And his name is God. He knows every single thing. Listen, not just about the human body, but every single thing about your body and my body. That's the reason when we get in trouble health-wise, what do we do as Christians? We go to him because he's the great physician. He knows everything about us. He knows how to prepare. He knows how to do all these things, repair. He knows how to do it in just a, a word if he wants to. And these doctors that make you think they're God, let me tell you something. They're not God. God is God. And God gave them the intelligence to be who they are. And sometimes we need to tell them that. I'm so thankful that here in this church we've got a couple of doctors and they love the Lord. And, and they know, amen, where, where they came from and they know how God created them. And teachers, and I thank God for our godly teacher. We have a lot of teachers in our church, and I thank God that they're godly teachers. But when you look at this all-powerful God, and he simply points to the human body, and he says, first of all, we are physical miracles. Now, David, when he looked at the physical body, that we are a, a physical miracle, here's what he was talking about. He said in Psalms 139, verse 13, For thou hast possessed my reins and hast covered me in my mother's womb. David, now, now you've got to get this. David had just went through one of the hardest things in his life. He, he had committed sin with Bathsheba. Uh, he had killed her husband. He had lied. He had done all these things. His life was just a total mess. I, I said to the early morning crowd this morning, and I mention this a lot because I read that Psalms a lot. Psalms 51, you can see the agony in his soul. I mean, he's at the bottom of his, of his life spiritually. It's just a horrible sight to, to, I mean, once it gets into your mind to read Psalms 51, how horrible his life had gotten. But now God is starting to speak to him and show him things that, that he didn't show anybody else. And David was able in these Psalms to write them down. And, and some of the things that I've been talking to you about, about his power, about all of this stuff, uh, omniscience and omnipotent and all these things, David was shown by God. And one of the things he was shown by God is this physical miracle when he says in Psalms 139, 13, For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. In other words, you've loved me from the beginning. And I want you to know something tonight, folks. God loved you from the beginning. He loves you tonight. It breaks the heart of God when someone dies lost. Because he loves them. And he cares about them. And David was seeing this about God. David said about God, You, Lord, You're the one that formed my inward parts. You, Lord, are the one who wove me in my mother's womb. You, Lord, made me and created me. Think about this. Because, folks, I think the more we think about the creation of God and how much God loves us, the more we'll try to be more than we are as Christians. And that's really what David was saying. He was saying, if I'd only known how special I was, if I'd only, I would have never, if I'd only known. But his life got in trouble. His life got messed up. But then he continues in verses 15 and 16 to talk about uh, this, how wonderfully we're made. He said, my substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thy eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy, in, in thy book all my members were written, which is in continuance were fashioned, which as yet there was none of them. What he's saying there, he's saying that I, I know that, that my life, that, that who I am, that I'm not a perfect being, but God, you created me so I could love you. 
And that's who we are tonight. We are created. Listen, folks, you're not created to believe the lies of this world. You're not created to believe the devil. You're created to love Jesus Christ. Everyone that's ever been created, the hands of God was on your life. He created you. Special, you're different. You're not the same as anybody else. There's no two people alike. Isn't that amazing? How God loved us enough that He made us all different? When you put those two verses there together, verses 15 and 16, when you put those two verses together, the point is the human body is not an accident. Listen, folks, every time we uh, see abortion happen in this world, listen to me, that baby was not an accident. God knew who that child was, and he knows that child. And that's what David was saying. That's the reason it's so wrong. Young ladies... And young men, it is so wrong. Abortion is. Millions and millions and millions of babies have been aborted. And God created them. They were given, listen, by God. I don't know about the circumstances. We could debate all the circumstances and all these things. All I know is what God tells me in His Word, that He knows them all. He knows them all. And I believe God, don't you? I believe Him. That the human body is not an accident. That was just thrown together. It had a creator. But your body is a miracle. Your body was put together by the Almighty God. That's what David exclaims here in Psalms 139, verse 14. He says, because of that. Now listen to him. You can almost see it starting to build up in his heart. He's talking about how you're fearfully and wonderfully made. And then he goes on. Then he talks about, in verse 14, I'll praise thee. Even creation should make us praise God. You know, people say, well, I don't know if there's a God. I've never seen God. Listen, creation ought to make us as individuals praise God. When you drive home tonight and see the mountains and the trees and the beauty that God's given us here, when you go on vacation and see the oceans and and see all the miracles that God has created upon this earth, He's saying to us, as David is exclaiming here, even seeing those things and the wonder of this body ought to make us praise God. We ought to get on our knees and praise God. That's what he says. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and I'm wonderfully made. And then he goes on to say, as he looks at his own self, as he sees his own uh, humanity, David, he says, marvelous. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. What he was saying is, when I see these things clearly now, when when I look upon these things clearly now, and I see how fearfully and wonderfully I made, David said, he said, your works, I mean, he just got excited. Your works are marvelous, Lord. You're marvelous. And my soul now knoweth, is what he was saying, how marvelous and wonderful and powerful you really are. Isn't that good? Hallelujah. That's good stuff there. How wonderful God made us. The human body contains 30 trillion cells. The genetic information contained in each cell of the human body is roughly equivalent to a library of 4,000 volumes. So if you're going to catalog all the genetic information in your body, it's going to take a whole library to do it. It's going to take a library that's big enough to hold 30 trillion times 4,000 books just for your body. We're physical miracles. And the only way we can be explained is by the awesome power of God. And to think they teach in school that we were in a pond of, you know, 
the tadpole and that tadpole crawled out of that pond, become a frog, and that frog crawled up on the shore and jumped up in the tree and became a monkey. <laughs> that monkey grew a tail, hung on to the limb of the tree, and it broke off, and you became a man. What idiots. And God said, David said, you are wonderfully. You all are laughing at me. <laughs> they know. <laughs> you are wonderfully and fearfully made. And you were made by the hand. Listen, God had his hand on you Amen. when he made you. Amen. Boy, that's good, isn't it? I'm going to give you one more thing, all right? One more thing, we're going to quit. you saying amen right there, I know. We're mental miracles, too. Look at Psalms 139, verses 17 and 18. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. Than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. He said, when I look at my thoughts, when I look at how you've made my brain, how that I can, you know, even think and, 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 and sum up things and, and calculate things. And when I look at all of this, it, it just overwhelms me when he says it's more than the sand. He says it just overwhelms me. I, I, I don't even have answers for it. And by the way, you won't have any answers for it because you're not God. But God has the answers. He says, I'm just overwhelmed when I think about it. Look at that word thought and think about the miracle of the mind. You know, I, I think about my little grandkids. You know, it's amazing to see them when they're first born and to see them grow and how smart they get so fast. And by the way, you know, your kids or grandkids, if it's your grand, they're the smartest. Amen. Don't look at me like that. You know I'm telling the truth. They're just the smartest little things, you know. My children, they're just, I mean, that's the way we are. That's good. We ought to be that way. But they're so smart. And they learn so fast. I mean, to hear the first time they say they're ABCs. And tell me what you think of me. <laughs> and, you know, their letters and, 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 and numbers and how they learn to, to use toys that I don't even know how to use. <laughs> I mean, they're smart. And we think they came from a monkey? <laughs> I mean, they're smart. And what David was saying here is that the information of the human brain alone is absolutely staggering. It's staggering to understand how much information we can put into our brain. I read this article and it says if you took the information in your brain and wrote, out it, wrote it out in English, it would fill 20 million volumes. Now I know some of you don't feel that smart tonight including myself. <laughs> but that's what it says. In, in other words, every one of us, as the article went on, every one of us have the equi equivalent of 20 million books inside our heads. In order to build a computer that could hold all that the human mind can do. I just read this article. It's not <laughs> In order to build a computer that can Hold all the human mind can do. It would take a building a city block wide, a city block deep, and 22 stories high. Just in our body, in our mind alone, we have to know how incredible God is. All these kids, these smart kids, all of them go to school and college. And they just catch on so fast. I wish I was half as smart as these kids now. I struggled in school. 
I really did. You know why? Because I like playing ball. And that's all I did was play ball. Now, when I got in high school, I had to crack the books. And then when I went to Bible college, God helped me or I never got through. <laughs> but, but I think about these kids, you know, and my kids and your kids and how smart they are. You ever wondered about that, how smart they are? I mean, they go to school and become nurses and lawyers and doctors and PAs and nurse practitioners and and they just act like it's nothing. They just go and do it. Lord, I'd be, I, I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> but you know, God, God made you. And God's been good to you. And God's been good to me. Amen. Amen. And you're fit. Listen, you'll be fit for exactly what God wants you to do. All you got to do is find out what God wants you to do. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. There's nothing, look at me, there is nothing quite like you. Nothing. So you go out here tonight and th think to yourself, nobody loves me. Nobody cares about me. I'm so pitiful. <laughs> you just think about what I said tonight. God formed you in your mother's womb. And when you were born, he knew you. He knew you before you were born. Isn't that good news tonight? Now, isn't that good news you can go out with tomorrow and live a more happy life? Don't be so down and out. Good grief. God's been good to us. Amen. Let's bow our heads tonight. Thank you, Father, for tonight. Thank you for the service. Thank you for...